Okay, here's the next problem. We have a purely resistive network here, a purely capacitive here, a purely inductive here, and a mixed L inductive, in other words, um, C capacitive, in other words, R resistive, in other words. Let's start out by making a diagram, understanding that uh, in phase, as we mark phases, the Purely resistive is along the x-axis. It would have a phase angle of zero. So we can instantly answer questions about the phase angles of this network. Um, inductance, the reactance of the inductor, is on the positive uh, y-axis, which is positive 90 degrees. So for a purely inductive network, you have a phase angle of 90 degrees. For a purely capacitive, um, you have a phase angle of negative, it's on the negative y-axis, so that's negative 90 degrees. Now, for D, let's draw the phaser. Whenever possible, draw a picture of your situation. And you know, I'm going to fill, I'm going to fill this in later when we get there. Um, let's calculate the resistance of this network here. We have two resistors in parallel and one in series. The formula for resistors in parallel, reciprocal of the resist parallel, effective parallel resistance is just the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistors. And if you have three or more, you just keep going. So it's 1 over 80 plus 1 over 80. Okay, reciprocal. Equal. Now this will be the reciprocal of the effective resistance. So the effective resistance is 40. The resistance of the parallel two parallel resistors is 40 ohms. And then... Effective resistance in series is just add the resistors up. Take that 40 ohm plus 10 ohms, so the total resistance, RT, is 50 ohms. This is, um, so that answers part A. Uh, let's, we can answer part C instantly. Because 1 over inductance in parallel is 1 over the individual, add up the reciprocals of the individual inductors. Inductor in series is add the inductors together. Except for changing R's to L's, the formulas are the same. So we can just write down L total, the effective total inductance is going to be 50 microhenries capacitors now capacitors in parallel add the capacitor formulas are a little differently capacitors in parallel are just add add them up so the two capacitors 80 nanofarads and 80 nanofarads in, in parallel add 80 plus 80 that gives you 160. capacitors in series is you, the reciprocal of the capacitance in series is the sum of the reciprocal of the individual capacitors. So we have to take one-tenth of a nanofarad plus one one-hundred-and-sixtieth of a nanofarad. Reciprocal plus 160, take the reciprocal, equals, that's the reciprocal, the answer, take the reciprocal again, and we get the answer. So the capacitance of the total capacitive network is, what was it, 9.41 nanofarads, NF. We don't have the reactants yet.
for that, we need the one megahertz. That's 10 to the sixth hertz. The formula for reactants of a capacitor is this formula. And it equals, for a purely capacitive network, the reactants equals the impedance. So let's give this a, a crank. We Let's see, we have 9.41 nanofarads in our calculator. We just got to get the nano, which is 10 to the negative 9th. So we multiply that times 10 to the negative 9th. And then multiply that by the frequency times 1 times 10 to the 6th times 2 times pi equals, this is the denominator now, we flip it to get the numerator. And that gives us 16.9 ohms. And I'm going to go ahead and store that memory. XL is 2 pi times the frequency times the inductance. Uh, clear this out. 2 times pi times frequency times inductance. 50 micro is 10 to the negative 6th microhenries equals. So we get 314 ohms. Um, now, in our phasor diagram, this is 16.9, this is 50, and this is uh, 314. So we have a big number here, a small 16.9, and resistance is kind of in the middle. So this is XL, this is XC, this quantity here is XL minus XC, and this would be the impedance, this would be the phase angle. Impedance is the square root of XL minus XC squared plus R squared. And the phase angle equals the arc tangent, the inverse function to the tangent, that is, of XL minus XC over R. Plug and chug now. We have all the numbers we need. Here's XL, or excuse me, we don't have all the numbers we need. We're going on to part D. So we've answered all the questions related to part A, B, and C. Uh, we've changed. We have different L and anyway, everything's changed. So uh, for part D, we have to calculate um, we have to calculate XL and XC. Well, R is um, going to be 10, 10 ohms in this case. XL is going to be, it's the same formula, 2 pi F times L, except now L is 10 microhenries. We can go back to our um, calculator. 2 times pi times 1 E6 times uh, 10 microhenries, 10 E negative 6, that's micro is negative 6, okay, negative 6 power, equals, so I got 62.8. Now I got ahead of myself a little bit. 62.8 ohms for XL. XC, same formula as this, uh, except with a different C. C is 10 nanofarads instead of uh, 9.41. It ought to be really close. Uh, I'm going to store this in memory because I'm going to need it later. XL minus XC. So when I calculate XC, it's 2 pi 
times the frequency, 1 times 10 to the 6th, times c is 10 uh, times 10 to the negative 9th power equals, that is the um, reciprocal of xc, and this is xc, 15 point, so instead of uh, 16.9, it's 15.9. Okay, um, picture's kind of the same. Big number here, 60 some odd up here, uh, 16 down, 10 sideways. And so we're, we're gonna get a picture. We're gonna get a phase angle somewhere in the high, above 45, maybe, um, uh, let's see, 75 or so. And Z, the impedance is going to be dominated by XL, so we expect it to be kind of close to 62.8. So let's go back to our calculator. Um, this is XC in the calculator now, minus memory recall. So I'm taking this minus this, and, and that's okay, um, equals, okay. Now, XL minus six, XC is a positive, so I'm going to change the sign. I'm going to store this in memory. I'm going to need it twice. So go, go ahead and store this in memory. Square it. Add it to R squared, which is 10. Square that. Equals and take the square root. And that will give me Z. 47.97 ohms. 48.0 ohms, or is that correct? Yeah, 48.0 ohms. Phase angle. Well, uh, let's see. Does that make sense that Z would be that? Oh, yeah. Um, it's really close to 62 minus 16, and with a little adjustment for R equals 10. So I, I think we're pretty good. I trust, uh, I have confidence in my answer. Um, Okay, uh, clear this away, recall the memory, that is, this memory is XL minus XC, divide this by the resistance, 10 ohms, equals, and then take the inverse tangent. And I got 77.97 degrees. That's really, it's almost straight up. It's dominated by XL, which is what we expect. So well, I'm going to call this done and go on to the next problem.